Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 release of Becky, and I'd seen a portion of a trailer for this before it came out, and it caught my attention because Kevin James as a villain, that has never happened before. I mean, there have been these kind of more light comedic actors who have taken on more serious roles in the past. I know Robin Williams had done that at one point. Uh, he was probably like the first one that I became very aware of that I was like, oh, this is a very weird role for this guy. Uh, so just to see this happen kind of again with someone like Kevin James, I was like, whoa. And I will say up front, he did a very nice job in that role. And I really would be interested in seeing him again in that role. But anyway, let me jump back into Becky. I'll tell you the good. I'll tell you the bad about it. But overall, I enjoyed this film and I would recommend that people check it out. It's directed by Jonathan Malott and Carrie Murnian, who also directed films Cooties and Bushwick. I have seen Cooties, and I did enjoy Cooties, so I don't have a review for it on my channel, unfortunately. At some point I'll get there, because I watched it, like, many years ago. Uh, written by Nick Morris, Ruckus Sky, what a name, and Lane Sky, who also wrote scripts for Rattle the Cage and The Devil to Pay. Now, I was just talking about Kevin James, but apparently originally the villain in this film was supposed to be played by Simon Pegg, which also would have been an interesting choice. But I'm kind of glad that he had scheduling conflicts and couldn't do it, because then we got Kevin James. And I think Kevin James was really good for this part. Uh, that rolls me into the synopsis. What is this film about? So it's basically about a white supremacist in jail who ends up breaking out. That is Kevin James' character with some others. And they're looking for something. They're on a mission. They're looking for something. They've had this plan for years about getting out of jail and going after something. And that butts up against a family. Uh, obviously, there's a character named Becky in this because of the title. It's her and her family who it ends up butting up against. And it's not just her old family. It's kind of a fusion of, you know, her mother's not there anymore and her father who she's having problems with is with another woman and that woman has a son. And so it's this kind of issue of the melding. So what's going on from a, you know, danger aspect with these convicts getting out and showing up. Uh, there's also at the same time, this kind of issue of conflict within this family unit uh, because obviously Becky's not happy about her father moving on in, in essence. But then there are other things that end up coming out a little bit, which Honestly, it, it's not like said outright, but when you think about what's going on in the film and motivations and why things are happening, you come to a realization about the family dynamic that you're just like, oh, that's interesting. So be on the lookout for that. They really do telegraph where the film's going with the opening conversation. Yes, there's an opening conversation that really sets up where you'll end up at the end because it is one of those films where like, it starts with where it ends and then ends with where it started, uh, which I like. I like that use uh, of that narrative device. So I'm down with it. It kind of gives you like a bit of a teaser before they, you know, bring it back and get a little bit slower and then work their way back up. So that's cool. Happy to see Joel McHale in this. I really like Joel McHale as an actor. My favorite role of his I know a lot of people will be like, oh, it's going to be Community. No, because I haven't watched all of Community yet, just a little bit. Uh, but I will say that um, I really love him in Assassination Nation. And if you haven't seen that film, definitely check it out. He's not a huge part of that film, but his role is really good, and he did a great job. And that's just a great film in general. So they establish the struggles of the main character very effectively very early on. So you really... It's not that you just understand the character early on, but you know what they're going through. You know the conflicts that are in place. And it gets that stuff kind of out of the way kind of fast, so you don't have to, you know, keep having it talked about over and over and over again. They do do a good job of kind of addressing something like that and then being like, okay, moving on, which I do appreciate. Uh, well, relatively early in, they do something that people really hate seeing in, f in, the, in film in general, and it happens a few other times, stuff kind of like that. Um, if you don't like harm to animals, people, this might not be your movie. Uh, I'm relatively, I'm relatively okay with it. Uh, my problem is when I can tell that animals have been treated poorly on set 
as it being a part of the film. That's my problem because I know that any sort of violence against animals in the film is not real and that's okay. But um, I under I do fully understand why it's hard for people to see stuff like that. I do. In tense times, they use a very low discordant music that is effective in increasing the tension, but they do go too hard on the music at times, especially in times like that. And that's one thing I will always harp on. It's that we don't need to be screamed at by the score. We are intelligent enough audience members. If you just play it low or medium, we'll get it. We know where you're going. We know what you're trying to say. We know the mood you're trying to create. You don't have to nail people over the head and scream at them with your score. And this film does a bit of that, and it really bothers me. Maybe it doesn't bother you. That's fine. Just telling you where I stand. There are some cool and interesting shot transitions in this. That's one of the biggest things. The directing and cinematography, very polished, looks very, very nice. And along with that, these cool shot transitions. I always appreciate uh, creative, fun, interesting shot transitions. And it makes you take notice of directing and cinematography in a film. And with this film, you take notice of those things. So that's a big plus. There is something gross involving a vulnerable body part that some people will have to look away from. I'm looking at you, subscriber Uncle Pete. Just letting you know. It's in there. You might want to cover your eyes when it comes up. You'll know when it's coming, pretty much. I appreciated this particular scene. It is a gross-out scene. It is particularly brutal. I enjoyed it. Uh, but I know there are people out there who have to look away. Just saying. There's a point where things turn, and that's what everyone's waiting for. Uh, I like the conversation that triggers this turning point as well. You know those films that you're watching, and you're like, I know where this is eventually going, so you're really waiting for that moment where that that where it starts to like go go from like a fast walk to a sprint. Uh, when that moment happens in the film, you start getting more excited. At least I did, and you're like, here we go, strap in, let's do this. And then it's more fun. Not that it wasn't fun before that, but the fun goes way up, in my opinion. You get some good violent payoff. That's kind of speaking to that turning point of when things start to get more fun. There's some really brutal, violent, good payoff for this film. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you can figure out who is exacting revenge in this. Hmm. Title, maybe? Yes. And it's fun. There's a quasi-subplot that seems like it was added just to fill out some runtime. Now, obviously, if you've watched enough of my reviews, you know that one of my pet peeves is padding runtime just to hit a specific time or get around there. So this is about an hour and a half, so you can see those moments, because there are some pacing issues with this film, where obviously there's some stuff that's padded. Now, with one of the convict characters, there's an aspect of that character that seems very out of place, in my opinion. It feels very forced. It feels very so what, and for that reason, it feels like it was thrown in there to pad the runtime. Uh, ultimately, it comes into play at the end of the film, but I would argue that we're better off with a film that doesn't have that aspect to it. That should have been dropped, in my opinion. It kind of cheapens the story to a degree. It actually cheapens the actions and the heroic uh, feats of one of the characters, in my opinion, the main character, uh, which kind of sucks because it's about that character. You want to see all about that character. You want all the glory for that character. So it just kind of cheapens things in my opinion. I wish it was left out. There is a cool moment toward the end that is cool for what happens, but also because of how they chose, uh, sorry, chose to shoot that film or shoot that scene. You will know what I'm talking about. It's a very interesting, cool scene. And it happens around a campfire. Just know that. Uh, that scene, like you see it coming, you like you know what's going to happen at that point, like you pick up on it before one of the characters picks up on it, and you're just like, oh, I see what's going on, that's cool, but then the way they shot it, even cooler, love that moment, it might, it, it's one of my favorite moments of the film. Very solid ending, but there's unfinished business that will make you mad that they did not resolve. Uh, there is an item that is featured within the film that ends up becoming important, but it it's left to mystery then. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of like, I understand that this is important, 
Now tell me why this is important. And they never tell you why it's important. I hate that. A lot of people hate that. And you might be pissed off by the end of the film because of that. But it's a good film. It's definitely worth watching. Just know going into it, that little thing will drive you crazy that they do not explain. I mean, I guess they're trying to set it up for a sequel. Maybe leave it open. I don't know. But come on, man. You got to satisfy our imagination. We're curious. We need this. Uh, like I said, some pacing issues here and there, but relatively okay with the pacing in general. I uh, already talked about Kevin James doing quite a good job, but Lulu Wilson, the titular character of Becky, really nice job. Her acting was on point. She did a phenomenal, phenomenal job in a role that's pretty demanding, honestly. I would love to see Lulu Wil Wilson in more stuff because she has got chops. Quite enjoy what she did there. I found myself wondering if this was going to be as straightforward as it seemed story-wise, or if there would end up being some sort of twist that comes up at some point. No twist. Uh, they definitely did miss a lot of potential opportunities with the story. Now, that said, it's still a good film. It's just, while I was watching it, I just saw all this potential. I'm like, it would be really cool if they did this right now, or really cool if they did this right now. They didn't take any of the side paths. It's basically like they found this main road and they just stayed on the main road the entire time. They saw the side paths as they were going by. Like they're like you're seeing signs when you're on a highway of like, you know, rest stop. Here comes a Starbucks. Here comes a uh, Papa John's. Here comes a Dunkin' Donuts. And they chose to get off at none of those. They just wanted to stay on that road. I, I think it would have been fun to hit some rest stops, honestly, because you could throw in some really interesting stuff, but... They, they missed out on a lot of opportunities. Like, this was a good film. It could have been a great film if they added more to it. But, you know, maybe other people don't feel the same way. And that's fine. And you can tell me about it. There is some good subtext about discovery of who you truly are and what you learn about those close to you in the process of finding out who you are, basically. And just also just working through things. You know, work, working through things personally, working through things with your family, um, and being okay, you know, working through things, both emotionally, both within relationships, but also when you're in danger and physically. So I like the, that those kind of are together throughout the film moving forward. So, uh, pretty good film. I did enjoy it. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a very solid three and a half star rating. I did enjoy this. I would recommend it. It's worth it. Um, and could they do a sequel? I think so. Not a well. I was gonna say I'm not a hundred percent sure what they would do for a sequel, but it just a few ideas did just pop into my mind with what they could do. So could be interesting. Just saying. Anyway, thank you for checking this out. Put your comments down there if you see Becky. You can go ahead and put spoilers in the comments. That's fine. Did you love it? Hate it? In between? Let's talk about that. Also, do me a favor, hit subscribe if you are not subscribed already. If you are subscribed already, thank you very much. You are awesome. If you're not subscribed, please do so because of a few things. One, costs you nothing. Two, it takes like a second and it's totally painless. And three, it really, really keeps me motivated to keep these videos going. I make no money. My YouTube channel makes no money. Um, I don't know if it ever will, to be honest, because... It's horror content, and YouTube doesn't really like to monetize that type of stuff from what I understand. So, we'll see. But, um, yeah. But, subscribe. That's what this is all about. It's about growing this nerdy horror community, and I appreciate you. Anyway, thank you for taking your time to check this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.